First Church. How are we doing this Wednesday? I'm tired, but it's been a long day. But every day, every Wednesday, it's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, to come and worship, to hear the word. I don't know about you, but I am rejuvenated every time I come to prayer meeting because it's just something about prayer meeting, getting that 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 rest or that 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 energy that you need during the middle of the week. You don't know. I don't know what everybody might be able to or might be going through, um, might be going through different stuff. I'm a college student, so it's that crunch time as we start to get to the end. But it's something about prayer meeting that just helps me to get better and push through to the rest of the week. We're going to sing a song, a um, simple song. It talks about leaning on the everlasting life. If you know the song, do you mind just singing with us? We just make one big choir this evening. First verse says, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms, what a blessed Everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting. Oh, that's why I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Let's do that one more time. Oh, I am leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting. everyone. What a blessing it is to be in the house of God this mid-week, um, midday week. It is good to come aside and just pray and worship God because we need to be revitalize ourselves. And so I'm glad that you are here and to our online individuals who have signed in, you could have chosen any place to be but you signed on to First SDA Church, Huntsville, Alabama. And I just want to say to the, our online lookers, we are very, very happy to have you. And I know that you will be truly blessed as we worship the Lord. And the topic for the month for this series, If My People Pray. We need more prayer given the times in which we live. So I'm glad that everyone is here and online so that we can worship God in the beauty of holiness. Let us bow our heads as we have opening prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for allowing us to be able to come into your house of worship this evening. We thank you that you have given us the invitation to come into your presence with singing and thanksgiving. And so here we are, Lord, presenting ourselves bare before you. We ask that you will wash us of every filthiness so that our prayers and praises will ascend onto your throne as sweet incense. 
We ask that you will lead out in this service, so may the Holy Spirit fall on us, we pray. Thank you again for bringing us here in worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening again, everyone. Amen. Somebody's got a story to tell. They don't even want to wait. Uh, somebody's got a story to tell. <laughs> I'm just walking. <laughs> Listen, it's always good to have a story to talk about Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus. Here we go. First person. I'm going to try to tell it real. I'm going to try to tell it real fast. We all know the story of Job, and we know that Job still doesn't know the end of his story. He won't know the end of his story till heaven. We, on this side of him, know the end of his story. And I've always said, when God looks down and he sees me, and if he says, have you considered my servant, Alethea? I would be the one who went through. But I gotta tell you, I had a Job experience, and I almost didn't make it. It was coming up right to communion, and I was determined I was going to take part in communion. And I don't know if any of you have ever had things happen where you just said, I, I can't take communion because I am not ready. My heart's not right. And I was not going to miss it. But the devil got on my job, and I said, Jesus, you got to show up. You got to come up in here. You got to do something. And I didn't know what God was going to do but I had to be ready for communion. And I had a document I was supposed to sign. I said, I'm not signing that thing. And they said, well, you can write. Why would you tell a writer that they can write a response to something nasty that you wrote? I wrote Friday night. I wrote after church Sabbath. I wrote on Sunday. And I printed Sunday night. And I said, I'm turning this in. Well, Lord, I'm not going to turn it in. Yeah, you're going to turn it in. No, I'm not going to turn it in. I got to work, and I was going to turn that thing in. Do you know God showed up? I didn't have the first page. How are you going to turn in a four-page document of yep, 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 that, 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 without the introduction? And I'm saying all that to say, by the time I finished writing it, I went to work that morning. And I said, you guys come down, we got to pray. And one person prayed, fix it, Lord, for everything. I prayed the prayer that I thought fixed what I needed. But my other co-worker prayed the prayer that was needed. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. That was what she prayed, that we would remember that. And I am so thankful that God got victory. Because my, my four pages would have turned the place out. God got the victory. Nothing has happened. Nothing was said. God brought peace because I was determined to have peace. My coworkers were return, determined we were going to have peace, and we have had peace. People getting along. The, the battle was God's. He won it, and I'm thankful. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Skinner. All right, I, I told you all last week that I would keep you all posted on my uh, experience with my job, uh, increasing um, with more responsibilities than what I knew I could handle alone. So I, um, I turned over to God, and uh, of course, I also mentioned too that I've had three strokes in the past, and my doctor was concerned about that now and uh, they linked it to um, stress. And uh, with the, the responsibilities that I had at work, <laughs> there's no question about it, it was on a level that was unbearable. But every day that I went in with these new responsibilities, I said, okay, God, you got this thing under control. I feel a little anxiety coming on. I said, God, you told me you was gonna take care of me, you got this thing under control. And they would ease up. Well, last Wednesday, when I gave the same testimony, I said, I was gonna keep you all posted. That, of course, was Wednesday night. 
Thursday morning I woke up and usually I dress down as the week gets closer to the end of the week and I said, let me wear something a little nicer. <laughs> and I did, I'm glad I did because when I got to work on Thursday morning, Pastor Lee, you're always saying, God is working out your problems for you. Thursday morning when I got to work, I had an email with uh, one of our human resources people and uh, she wanted to meet with me that afternoon around 1.30 if I'm not mistaken. I had already had two appointments. I had to appoint with my uh, tax accountant and I had an appointment with my doctor. So there's me three appointments in one day. So needless to say, there was no work accomplished on that day. Work is piling up. So when I met with the, uh, the young lady in human resources, um, believe it or not, they made me another job offer. And I was like, what? <laughs> okay, hello. <laughs> and um, to make it short, what God meant, I mean, what man meant for evil, hello. <laughs> God turned it around for good. Well, okay, you know, I don't take rejection too well. So I told them, well, let me pray about it, okay? I prayed about it, and that night, the Holy Spirit impressed upon me. I'm getting ready to close one door, but I'm going to open up another one for you. I said, okay, God, I'm moving forward. So I called him the next morning and said, I'm gonna take that position. Not only was the stress level a lot lesser, <laughs> and not only that, um, it's kind of a slight promotion. <laughs> well, I call it promotion because you get paid more money. <laughs> So I said, oh my God, <laughs> to God be the glory. And uh, so anyway, um, I had uh, already had put him for a two-week vacation, but I was going to do some training on my own. And so um, today I'm on vacation, but I went to work <laughs> because I'm so excited to not only to uh, do a good, good job for a man, but to please my God on top of all that. That is my testimony. Amen. Hey, Thank you so much. What a wonderful testimony. I see we have your next. Okay, come on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. I'm very shy, so bear with me. I'm very shy, so bear with me. Um, Y'all saw my mom earlier. I'm Kimberly Skinner, daughter of Alethea Skinner. Um, I should be dead. <laughs> I committed suicide twice, or attempted to kill myself twice. Um, 33 days ago. And I got out the hospital on the 15th, Monday. I tried to hang myself in Huntsville Hospital in my hospital room. It all started out with five seizures at home, one seizure at work, one seizure in the hospital. They thought I had a stroke because my whole left side of my body stopped working. I couldn't fathom my life being here on this earth with the left side of my body being paralyzed. My left arm started working and I took the pulse ox cord, the cord that touches your blood oxygen level in your finger and I took it around my neck to kill myself. They came in, they took all the, what they thought were all the cords in my room, gave me a sitter. Sitter number one went to sleep. Gave me the opportunity to find a court to hang myself again. But again, Mercy said no. Yes. 
three people came and saved me from somebody that couldn't even push a button to call for help. One voice cried out and they came. I completed 10 days in Huntsville Hospital and got out, went to see my psychiatrist. She said if I was willing to go to Kentucky or Tennessee, would I go? I believe it was that day or the day after I ended up in Tennessee. I completed 30 days there. And I'm so thankful to God for using my psychiatrist to send me to a place that I could get help. I had a team that was there that actually saw me and listened to a minority individual and was composed, spiritual based and chemical based that can deal with both sides of my mind spiritually and chemically and I'm so grateful to be here. My psychiatrist said on day 15, he said you'd have been dead 15 days ago and I'm so glad I had the opportunity to meet you because you have so much to live for. So, so anybody that's listening, don't make a permanent decision for a small situation. Thanks, Mom, for fighting and praying for me. Absolutely. Your prayers were heard. Thanks for praying for me. Can you, uh, what's your name? Kimberly Skinner. Kimberly Skinner. Can you sit there for me, Kimberly? Come and sit right here. Thank you. We have two more testimonies and then we're going to pray. I just wanted to share what happened to me. Uh, Monday I was sick and I had to go to the doctor. I had to miss work and go to the doctor. I had to get three shots because of my back again and he had just gave me shots like two weeks prior or three weeks prior. Um, so today I was at work and I was working and then I was going to stay late. I was like, I feel like staying late. Then I was like, I really want to go to Bible study. So I left and then I started feeling really sick and tired. I was like, dang, I ain't going to be able to go to Bible study. So I said, let me call my mama. I called my mama because I don't know. I was like, maybe she don't feel good. And she wasn't feeling well. And I could hear it all in her voice. So I just immediately started praying for her because that's what, I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a prayer warrior and I'm proud to be a prayer warrior. And I'm just, when I came today, I was so happy to be here. God, I love you so much. So I'm praying for my mom and I'm praying for her. And then she starts saying, the healing in your hands still work and you all the way in Alabama. And then she said, I'm feeling better. Her head stopped hurting and stuff. Then the Lord told me, touch yourself. I used you so many times to lay them hands on people and pray for them. Now you touch yourself. Touch was hurting you. And I went to touch my side, touch my back. And then he said, praise me. And I went to praising him, just thanking him. It's all in the praising. It's all in the praising, I'm telling y'all. And then he told me, the more you praise him, the more I feel better. And I was just praising him and praising him. And I said, I can't wait to go to church. And I wanted to tell everybody in here, when you're not feeling good, lay your hands on yourself and you pray for yourself. And then one more thing I got to tell y'all about our pastor, Pastor Lee, God showed me this. I know I'm in the right place. He told me and he showed me this man, Pastor Lee. I'm learning from him and I'm so glad to be under his leadership. And to you, you hold on to God's unchanging hand, and you ain't seen nothing yet, okay? And I want to pray with you out there when you get finished. Amen. There are so many people who are asking for testimonies. 
but I'm just going to take one more. Well, I'll go. Y'all go ahead. And this is Wednesday night prayer meeting. Prayer meeting. Prayer meeting. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so thankful that we serve a God that takes care of us when we don't know how to take care of ourselves. I'm so thankful for our daddy God. Well, about three weeks ago, I was in my kitchen and I, well, actually I was at work and I was deciding that I was gonna come to prayer meeting, but was tired, so decided to go home. That week, there was a lady that had come up to pray for, I don't know if it was her son, her grandson, but the pastor asked people to come and to touch it and agree that he would be made better in the hospital. So I left my kitchen and I went over to the television and touched and agreed and my TV is right uh, above my fireplace. So I'm touching and I'm praying and Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus and whatever, okay, this God. And I'm bowing down and, I'm, and, and I got a swift of an odor that I wasn't familiar with, like a rotten eggs. And I said, oh, okay, well, uh, and I tried to continue to pray. I tried to continue to pray, but I just couldn't continue. I went back into my kitchen and I started to have headaches, started to feel dizzy. And a friend, a girlfriend of mine called from Columbus, Ohio. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have to give you a call later because I have to call the gas company. I think there's something going on here. I called the gas company. They came out. Indeed, I had a gas leak. They said they did not know how long that leak had been going on, and I hadn't been feeling the greatest, you know. Um, but I thank God that I was listening to prayer meeting that night and that I was touching and agreeing on the, on the TV screen to be put in a position to recognize that there was a gas leak. And I have to thank nobody but God. God is just amazing. And I'm so thankful that he takes care of us, poor little human people that we are. To God be the glory. Amen. Come on, God. And then this man here said he wanted to and you, oh man, we got some plenty of testimonies going on here. But, but make, make them short though, okay? Hello, good evening. I am really impressed by all these testimonies that I got. I, I did something that I even give the testimony to my pastor. That, and I want to talk to everybody about it. My wife and I has a place in Double Spring that we go to, re to relax because we have too many children around us. <laughs> so we went to, to Double Spring. I didn't even come to church here. I went to some white church and nobody there last week. This part. So we were there. I have, I usually go to my office. I see people only twice a day. So on Monday, I was, we were coming. I told my wife, let's go to the office quickly so we won't be late. When we got, we got to, to the short road, going through Malta, Bankhead Forest, they call it. It's a Bankhead Forest. When we got to a place, there's a, a big truck that carrying wood and just crashed in front of us. And it was very scary. Um, then my wife said, but, but, we, they, they say it's going to take eight hours to move those trucks. I said, I can't stay here in the bush for eight hours. My, my wife, so my wife said, well, let's go back home. I said, no. They, then somebody came to us and said, there's a little wild road over there that you can take to bypass the, the thing. I said, I said, how do I go through the place? They said they don't know too much. So I said, well, that's where I'm going. So I go to this unpaved road. It was going like this. And it's muddy. I think those big trucks, there's no other road up on that banquet forest. And then after some time, I drove for about two hours and I couldn't get out. I was lost in the bush. 
And then I said, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? There was nobody. When we go to this place, the barrier ground was there. And I said, Lord, what are we going to do? We were so scared. I was more scared than my wife. I said, well, when they see my wife, they might take her and kill me. <laughs> I, I said, what am I going to do? I've never said, I said, I said, and you think my country was wild? We don't want, this place is wilder because I couldn't see how to get out. So then I, we stopped our car. We were the only one in those, and we stopped the car, and then we got on the road to pray. Like the pastor said, prayer does everything. So my wife and I, we, saw, we bowed down to the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I'm so silly, but please help us, help us to get out of this place. We can't call because there's no, no, no sign over there. So I said, why well, am I going to get out of here? I'm in America and I'm going to get killed here. So my, I said, but, so when, after we prayed, then we saw a, a, a road over there. We've been going through many things. We couldn't get out. But we prayed to the Lord and the Lord showed us another place. And we got there. And then we have been looking for a house, any house in this place that we can contact. So when we got there, we saw, a, my wife saw a white lady in front of the, of the, of the house. Uh, and we said, I said, well, she might be wild. Well, we, we might be wild in here because this is, this is Indian, this banquet forest is it's, it's a, a whole place that's segregated. So we walked to her and we said, so, he said, what do you want? I said, well, I'm so sorry, we are lost. He said, you lost? Where are you going? I said, if we can get to Moulton, we'll find our way. He said, over here. Then she showed me how you go this way, this way, this way. It was so confusing to me because that's what I've been doing for two hours. And then, but because the Lord showed this lady, the lady said, I know you're going to have a, a whole problem. I said, but what I will do is I will get in the car, in my car, and, and you drive and follow me. And then I got, I said, so we, I said, but one other thing the Lord did for us, my, my car was on empty. I mean, my wife was watching it, but the emptiness stayed like that for 20 more miles. <laughs> While we are following the lady. And then I said, please get her. So he finally got, after 20, 20 miles, he got us to, to, uh, to Moulton. And then we find the gas station, and I was going to talk to the lady. My wife said, go and pump the gas. I said, oh, there she goes again. <laughs> and then I said, and then, then she was talking to the lady while I was pumping the gas. Then what did I said, as I was thanking the lady. I said, thank you very much. I will. So I look in my pocket. I could only get about $100. I said, I will give you this for being, I said, I didn't give it to you. God is giving you this for helping me. And she was so happy. And I was so glad. Okay. The only bad thing is, oh. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm, I don't want to disturb. The pastor, you the one that tra training us to pray when we have problems. And I'm praying hard. And the Lord answered it. The lady then ask my wife, what, where are you all live? What does he do? And my wife said, well, he, he, he has an office in uh, Decatur. What? He said, he's a, he's a doctor. He said, you are a doctor? And you're lost up here? I said, I said, I said yes, I am lost up here because I came here. What have, the lady said, well, if you know people in Decatur, my, my husband died there. And then my mother it's in, it's in heart failure over there in Decatur. So I said, 
I said, well, I will go and see your mother. And we'll pray with the mother. And the Lord, so good, bringing me here safely. Uh, after being there, it's the grace of God. Uh, and he's the only one that's protecting us. Thank you all very much. I don't want to waste time. Amen. Amen. Oh, God is so good. Uh, come on. Come on. Tell your story. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so a lot of you know that my daughters were in a terrible car accident. And the younger one, she was, she ended up being in a coma for over a week. And the doctors were saying, we don't see any brain activity and we don't know if she's gonna wake up out of the coma. And if she wakes up, we don't know what kind of condition she's going to be in. Well, she did wake up out of the coma then, and um, she spent three months in the hospital, in, 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 how do you say? In hospital and then like outpatient rehab, but three, three months in the hospital. And even after that, they were saying, she's not gonna be able to learn. She's not gonna be able to communicate. She's mm. not gonna be able to function. She's not gonna be able to this, and she's not gonna be able to that, and she's not gonna be able to this. I just wanna let you know, it's been five years. Last Thursday was five years. And my Joya, you see her up here in the praise team. She is graduating hey. from college next week, next month, with two degrees. She's getting, she did four years. In four years, she's earning two degrees. An associate's in speech language pathology, but she didn't know anything about speech, but because of her situation, she learned what a speech therapist is. And she studied Spanish. So not only did she learn, regain her English ability, she learned a whole new language. She studied abroad in Argentina for, for six months. Everything, they said she wouldn't be able to drive. She wouldn't have the cognition to be able to drive. She went and took a test to be able to take driver's ed passed it with flying colors, she drives everywhere, has her own car, lives on her own, sings, learns, learns a new language. I mean, exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God is able. Oh, come on, my brother. Come on, this to it, bless you. Amen. Make it short now, make it short. All right, come on. Okay, sure. yeah. I, can I pray for you, everybody, right now? No, just, just go ahead. Just go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and do, do, do your thing. We're going to pray right after this. Okay. Okay, good. Anyway, um, I never stepped foot in this church before, but I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to hear all the testimonies. But my mom, last year, my friend back there, he don't even know this, but she flipped her car and it killed her. And I didn't even know about it. And anyway, my family didn't call me. I missed the funeral and all that good stuff. But God told me to keep going. Amen. And the last testimony that I heard, you just keep going, girl. Keep going, keep going. Don't Amen. give up. What, what, what? Other people say that you can't do. <laughs> God said, watch me. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Come on. We're going to make this one real short. Okay. Good evening, family. Today I was going upstairs in my house. I came down the stairs and I fell down seven stairs. And nothing's broken. I'm not sore. And I'm here tonight. I just have a little bruise on my face. The sex test, I had a stroke 12 years ago. And, I, and I'm driving. Everything the dice I couldn't do, I'm doing. I'm driving. I'm walking. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to read a book every month. I read one book a month. In the last, in the last three years, I've read 36 books. And right now, I'm, I'm on my fourth book for this year. I want to tell you, 
God knows. The doctors practice medicine, but God is medicine. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Oh, what a wonderful time. Uh, James, can you play Nobody Knows, The Trouble I Seen? You don't know that song? You have music? Nobody knows the troubles I see. Nobody knows but Jesus. You know that song? Okay, okay, all right. Please come. Come on. Mama, come. Ladies, we're going to do the African thing. Come on, ladies. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Don't, don't smother her just. No, 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 no. There's mothers right here. Thank you so much. Come on, ladies. There you go, James. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Elder Patton, Mary, come on. We want ladies praying for ladies. You know what? Nobody knows the trouble that this young lady is seeing to the point where she tried to take her life. But Jesus God said in answer to the question that he asked Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? Thou knowest God, thou alone knowest. Can she live again on the inside where she's dried on the inside? We know, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength mount up with wings like eagles they shall walk and not be weary run and not faint so come my sister i want you to pray for your sister because i can't do it I come tonight, Lord, to stand in the gap, Lord, and to pray for my dear sister, Lord, my dear daughter, Lord. Lord, because you told us in your word that if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven Forgive their sins and heal the land, dear Heavenly Father. So, Lord, as we call on you tonight, Lord, we know, Lord, that you are the great physician. You are the healer. You are the restorer. Lord, you are the one that anoint us, dear Heavenly Father. And so, Lord, as we call on you tonight, Lord, we ask that you will anoint my dear Heavenly Father, anoint my sister from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we know, dear Heavenly Father, and we've seen in your word, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that you have healed. You gave sight to the blind. You made the lame to walk. You made the dumb to talk. Lord, you are the almighty God, dear Heavenly Father. And as we have heard each testimony tonight, Lord, it is just evidence, Lord, of how good you are, how powerful you are. And Lord, as I call on you tonight, Lord, I pray with confidence because I believe your word. I believe every promise when you said that this is the confidence that we have in approaching you. We can ask anything according to your will and that you will hear us. And if you hear us, dear Heavenly Father, we can have the petition that we desire. And so, Lord, we are praying with faith. We are praying with confidence. We're believing without a shot of a doubt, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, that you're going di- to heal her. You're going to restore her. Lord, you're going to give her a testimony more powerful than tonight. She will go forth and do mighty things. She will praise you, dear Heavenly Father. She will honor you. She will magnify you. Lord, this is just the beginning of dear Heavenly Father. And so, Lord, we pray 
praise you tonight. We give thanks to you, the Heavenly Father. And Lord, I believe you're doing it right now because you said before we call, you will answer. And while we are yet speaking, you will hear. So Lord, thank you, Lord, for listening. Lord, we thank you for answering. And Lord, as I pray, Lord, if I didn't say what you wanted me to say, Lord, we know that the Holy Spirit takes my words to heaven and turn them into heavenly language to heavenly Father. Jesus is making intercession for us right now. And the Father is answering according to his will. So Father, I just praise you. I thank you. I honor you. I magnify you. And I'm claiming it all in the name of Jesus because you are a God that cannot lie. So thank you, Jesus, for hearing. And Lord, and all that are agreeing with us and me in prayer tonight, Lord, this we ask in your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Great is his faithfulness. The song is simple. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest Oh, 
cry hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside oh great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i've seen all i have needed in his hands have provided great is thy faithfulness lord one more time, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I've seen. All I have needed, thy hands have brought. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Say amen. Amen and amen and amen. Can we give God praise tonight. Amen. There we go. We give God praise tonight. Amen. amen. Praise God tonight for whom all blessings flow tonight. You know, the Bible says that they overcame by the word of the, their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And we extended our time tonight in our testimonies because we pray tonight somebody's going to be strengthened. Amen? Amen? Somebody was blessed tonight from the testimonies and seeing what the Lord is doing, has done. And because he did it before, how many of y'all know he'll do it again? Amen. 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 Listen, I'm going I'm to just go into our study tonight, get out the way so we can pray one more time tonight. Is that all right? Anybody come tonight to pray tonight? Amen. The, the, the QR code is on the screen. I want to welcome all those who are online once again tonight. I want to grab, grab, would you grab that QR code tonight, those who are in the sanctuary that want a digital copy of that. And if not, for those who are online as well, make sure you grab that. There are handouts here in the sanctuary. We're going to get into the Word of God on tonight. I want to talk tonight about the power of a praying church. The power of a praying church on tonight. And I'm going to do my best because it's already kind of late right now not to keep you all night tonight. Is that all right? All right, let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, I pray now that you would breathe upon us, God, through your holy word. God, we've come into this sanctuary tonight, God, because this is your house of prayer. And, and God, not just the preaching moment we desire, God, we want to commune with you. We want to talk to you, oh God, through the, through the miracle that you've given us called prayer. So God, please hear the petitions of your children of God tonight. God, not just those who are in the sanctuary, but those who are online as well. God, we know that you do all things well. So God, please have your way even right now and bless us as you see fit is my prayer in Jesus' name. Let the church of God say amen. Amen. It's on the screen tonight. This is a quote that you maybe have read in times past. When, when I was a teenager, if you tell me the blessing, I was, I was a teenager, I came across this quote, I mean, a long time ago. And, and I literally put it up on my wall in my bedroom as a teenager because I wanted to be reminded of the power of prayer. And, and, and here it is tonight. It says this tonight. It says, prayer is the answer to every problem in worry body in life. Prayer is the what, everybody? Answer. I want y'all to get that tonight. Prayer is the what? It's the answer to how many problems? Every problem in life. It puts us in true tune with divine what? 
Wisdom which knows how to adjust everything how? Perfectly. Y'all sound good tonight. So often, we do not pray in certain situations because from our what, everybody? From our standpoint, the outlook is hopeless. Ah, but nothing. How much? I wish I would shout that tonight. How much? Nothing is what? impossible with God. Nothing is so entangled that it cannot be remedied. No human relation is too strained for God to bring about reconciliation and understanding. No what, everybody? Habit is too deep-rooted that it cannot be overcome. No one is so weak that he cannot be made strong. No mind is so dull that it cannot be healed. Oh, no body is so, I'm sorry, no mind is so dull that it cannot be made brilliant. But going back, no one is so ill that they cannot be healed. Here it is. Whatever we need or desire, if we do what? Oh, that was somebody. If we do what, everybody? Trust God, he will do what? Supply it. If anything, ooh, God, if anything is causing worry and anxiety, let us stop rehearsing the difficulty and trust God for healing, love, and power. Who says amen? amen. I love that tonight. Prayer is the answer to every problem in life. How many of y'all know that if prayer can't do it, it can't be done? Are y'all hearing me tonight? Because we serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. That was three amens right there. We serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. I, I say that tonight for repetition because somebody sitting next to you needs to be convinced that our God is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. And I want to it kind of just kind of show us tonight because we got to go back to prayer tonight because you all came tonight with some things on your mind. But I want to I want to put on your mind again a text maybe that you've read a number of times. But I want to convince you tonight that there's power when we pray, especially collectively as a church. Take your Bible tonight. Go with me right now to the book of Acts right now, the New Testament book of Acts. Acts chapter number 12. Acts 12. This may for some be a familiar story tonight. Acts chapter 12. But I never preach as if you know it already. So I'm going to kind of dissect it if you hear it for the very first time. Acts chapter 12 and beginning at verse number 1 again. I want to talk tonight about the power of a praying church. The power of what, everybody? A praying church. Acts chapter 12 and beginning at verse number 1. Are you ready for the Word of God? Here is what the Bible says. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to do what? Vex certain of the church. Let me pause right there. Look up for a second because what was going on in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit was moving in ways that, that the church had yet never seen before. Matter of fact, the church is just being birthed. And at the beginning of its, of its genesis, the church understood, whether the people of God understood, that there's one thing we got to do above every other thing, and that is be in the Word of God and call upon His name. That the early church understood that Jesus had just been taken up, and then Jesus says that He's going to give us power and to be witnesses for Him. So let me kind of paint the scene for you in Acts 12, and that is we have in Acts 12 a whole bunch of believers who are on fire for God. Th these individuals are excited because they know that when they call upon God, God is going to move. They just have faith to that. So, so now Herod the king is upset because people are being saved under the name of Jesus. I mean, over and over again, day after day after day, somebody is giving their life to God, and now Herod feels threatened. So now the Bible says again that at that time Herod has stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And verse 2 says this. It says, and he did what? He killed James, the brother of John, with a what? Now, I want you to dig that for a second because check it out the text. I mean, Herod is upset, so he goes after James, and he kills James with the sword. Understand this, every disciple that lived for Christ was martyred at that time. Whether the 12 were martyred, the 12 lost their lives. So here it is tonight. So they killed James with the sword. Verse 3, because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. 
These were the days of unleavened bread. In other words, the Passover was going on during this time. So there are literally hundreds and thousands of individuals who are in Jerusalem at this time. Verse 4, and we had apprehended him, that's Peter, he did what everybody? Oh, I feel my help right there. He put him in prison and delivered him to four quatrons of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. But verse 5 is our main text. Verse 5, are y'all ready for this? Peter, therefore, was kept where? In prison. Ah, here it is, somebody tonight. But prayer. Nope, y'all ain't reading the text tonight. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Let me pause right there, y'all, because what happens right here, you may know the text already, but what happens is Peter is put in prison. And while Peter is put in prison, uh, Peter was that individual, the pusillanimous Peter, the Peter that would always speak without always thinking. We got some Peters in church, amen. And, and Peter was that bold disciple of Jesus. But at this moment now, their leader is now in prison. And because they've already killed James and there's a hit for the rest of the disciples, the disciples are fearing, but here's what they did. The church or the people of God got together. I felt my help right there. I, 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 I said I felt, I felt God's spirit move so well right there. Listen, y'all. When the church got together, they understood, y'all, that when we come together on one accord, with one agenda, and the one agenda was, yo, we've got to call on the name of the Lord. So the church got together, and watch what they did in verse 5. They called, not a business meeting. Am I too loud? Did y'all hear what I said right there? They didn't call the church board meeting. They didn't call a, a, a meeting on the side of a few people. No, the church got together and said, yo, let's have a prayer meeting. Because the church understood that our first priority is not preaching, it's not singing, it's not just coming together for fellowship. But the church understood, y'all, there's power when you come to God, come together in prayer. When you come to God in prayer, that's why Jesus had already articulated in Matthew chapter 21 that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And then here's one of the, the few scenes, Elder Francis, where we see Jesus literally getting upset. I mean, Jesus walks inside of the temple. It begins to flip tables over and begins to chase people out, y'all, and says, listen, you have turned my house into a den of thieves. But because there was buying and selling and they were doing everything but the main agenda. I, I want to hang out here. Now, I promise I won't keep you alone tonight, but can I hang out here, y'all, because I think that we've lost the real purpose of church. I, 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 I think that our minds have gotten warped, and, and I can't tell you who did it outside of the devil himself. But, but our minds have gotten warped to thinking that church is, is about preaching. And that, oh, y'all just say amen right there. I'm the preacher, and I'm going to tell you it's not about preaching. Amen. And we, we've got to this point where we think church is about entertainment. Can, can y'all look at, look, can I see the whites of y'all eyes for a second? I know those online, I can't see y'all, but I, can y'all look at the camera right now? Can I tell somebody, y'all, that the church is not an entertainment center? The church is not the movie theater. Come on, somebody. The church is not the ball game, not the baseball game, no. The church is the place where, no matter of fact, I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, can I tell y'all right now, we are the church, amen, and and, but, but here's the thing, y'all. We, we, we have relegated church to a two- to three-hour thing we do on the weekend. And, and we come looking for the best show in town. Ooh-wee. I, I hope y'all tweet that and record that right. We, we, we look for the best show in town, and whoever has the best show, that's where I'm going. Because somehow we have, as Christians, have a consumer mentality. 
And nobody, I'm doing the best I can, and nobody in the New Testament had a consumer mentality. They had a service mentality. They understood, y'all, that it's not about me, but it's about the Holy Spirit. Well, y'all stop saying, well, y'all, 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 y'all withhold y'all amens right there? Did they offend you already? No, because we need to rethink what we're doing when we come into this building. Because God is saying, listen, I'm ready to pour out the latter rain upon my people, but the reason I can't is because they don't desire for me to do nothing because they want to be entertained and go home the same way that they've come. But I said, no, I heard God. God said, no, no, time out. When the people of God come to first church, they need to understand, y'all, that this is a fountain of the power of the Holy Ghost. That whatever you need, God is able to supply it. Do I have a witness, somebody? We need to come together every time the doors are open and say, God, it's me. Wake, wake, wake. Hit your neighbor and say, neighbor, wake up. It's, it's going to be the text in a minute. Wake up, wake up. Wake. It's me. It's me, oh, Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. That's why I didn't mind tonight the long testimony tonight because we got to understand, y'all, somebody needs something from God. And if you came into this place or logged on tonight, then clearly you're saying tonight that, man, God, if you're going to do anything, please move in my life. Do I have a witness, somebody? So the church then came together and they began to call a prayer meeting. Matter of fact, I'm going to argue tonight because I've always done my homework, and here it is. Whatever, before there ever is a mighty move of God, there is first a prayer meeting that accompanies it first. Yep, I'm going to say it again because I got a little tongue twist. Can I say it again? Before God does anything major, It always comes before, proceeds with prayer of the people of God. So before Jesus called the disciples, he went up to a mountain to pray. Before the Ten Commandments came, they went up into, oh, y'all hear me tonight, before the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, there first was an upper room experience. Because God moves first when the people of God come together in prayer. Who says amen tonight? So now, hear me tonight. So the church called a prayer meeting, and understand this tonight, what is the church? Uh, The church in English, our English Bible, is called the ecclesia. That's the Greek word for church, ecclesia. Somebody say ecclesia. Amen. Everybody everybody say ecclesia. Ecclesia. It's composed of two words, the kaleo, which means the called ones, and the ek, which means to be out, it means out. In other words, the church then are the called out ones. Yep, 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 yep. Pastor, where are we called out from? We are called out from the world. We live in the world, but we're not supposed to be of the world. I'm lost lost, lost 50% already at that fast. We, We are in the world, but we're not supposed to be of the world. We live in the world, but God says you ought not be like everybody else. God says I need some people who know my name, who are called by my name, who will humble themselves, who will come together and pray, seek my face. God says I need some people, y'all, in the, in the last days that will begin to cry out for the move of God. So we are the called out ones that are called out from the world to be an influence in the world. Okay, I, I want to come on through. So, the Bible says we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Come on, somebody. I, I, I like salt. Not too much salt on one item. Amen. But how many of y'all know sometimes your greens need a, just a little bit of salt? Amen. Just a little bit. Okay, I could get amen right there. I'm in the south. I'm in the south. Your grits. Come on, somebody. Now, don't argue, don't argue with me tonight. Do not argue with the preacher. Amen. Don't argue with me tonight. Sugar does not belong in grits. I told y'all, sit down, sit down, sit down. Do I have, do I have some witnesses in the house tonight? Amen. Sugar don't belong in grits. No. No, amen. I'm praying for all of y'all that put sugar in y'all grits. Because what belongs in grits is 
salt. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God for all those who are saved with your salt. Amen. But here's the thing. If you put too much salt, come on, somebody, on anything, it can mess up the thing. So sometimes we think that we're doing God's will by being so salty. Sometimes we can turn people away because of our saltiness. Y'all going to help me preach in this place tonight. So, so we got to know how to move in, in moderate ways in application. So what God is saying is that, listen, y'all, I need for the church to be salt. Not sugar, amen. Too much of both is too bad, amen. Too much sugar, diabetes, amen. Too much salt, hypertension. Y'all going to help me preach tonight, right? So you got to be temperate in all things. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In other words, God has called us. Man, I'm so glad y'all here tonight. God has called us not to just come to church to get soaked in. I'm going to soak it all in. No, 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 no. When you hear the testimonies, when you walk inside of these doors and see somebody who is going through it, when you look around and you understand that, man, wait a minute, I am my brother and my sister's keeper. I'm not isolated. I'm not a silo. No, I've got to help somebody who is going through. Why? Because somebody helped you. Do I have a witness in the house tonight that can testify you ain't make it by yourself? Somebody came and helped you along the way. So we are the salt and light. We are the called out. Once God has not called us to be like everybody else. Now that's a hard word because many of us say, no, we're, I'm sick of not, I'm sick of standing out. I'm sick of no, 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 no. You have a job to do. Amen. And God's called us for that job. Now, I'm in the text still. The last thing we saw is they called a prayer meeting. Amen. I'm going fast tonight. They called it what everybody? A prayer meeting. They called a prayer meeting number one. Now, I want to show you a couple of things that I believe is going to bless your life. They called a prayer meeting, but not only that, they understood that Peter was in prison. The church called a prayer meeting. Why? Because the early church prioritized prayer. I'm going to say it live so y'all can read. The early church prioritized prayer. The early church prioritized prayer. Let the church say amen. amen. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. In fact, the church was birthed in a prayer meeting. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that significant, y'all? It doesn't make, doesn't make it like, oh, wait a minute. Because you would think that the church would be birthed in, in, in Acts 2 when Peter was preaching on Pentecost. No, no, no. Pentecost was the result of a prayer meeting. Pentecost was the result of brothers and sisters getting it right with one another on one accord. And when they got it right with one another, and then they, get, they came together praying, God says, hey, that's what my people really ought to look like right there. And then God says, let me show up in, in power and in might. And then God moved in a mighty way, and over 3,000 souls were saved in one day. Yep, they prioritize prayer meeting. They prioritize prayer. Um, I, I want you to look at this for a second because some of y'all, you won't believe me. So I, I, I say that Wednesday night is really the most powerful time of our entire week. I believe that. I, I told you on Sabbath that whenever I show up into this house, because this is not my house, this is God's house, I believe in miracles. And, and matter of fact, someone said early on, on Sabbath, I think someone stopped or someone said to me uh, that it's not a miracle. This is God's really, it's God's normal. Come on, somebody. It's not a miracle. No miracles in God. But, it's, it's, it's a but I, I believe that whenever we come together, I, I believe that God is able to heal, save, deliver. I, I have not called George yet because you ain't said amen. Promote. Set free, redeem. Are y'all hearing me tonight? I, I mean, I believe y'all that on Wednesday night, those children who are lost in the world, 
those children that were brought up in the church, I believe, y'all, that when we come together on Wednesday night and begin to pray, I believe that prayers from this place will affect somebody down in Timbuktu. Are y'all hearing me right now? Somebody that's on the edge of giving up. Somebody that was a throw in the towel. I believe, y'all, that from this place right here, God will hear and God will move, but God is waiting on us to come together. And by the way, it don't take 5,000. Come on, somebody. It takes some folk who believe in the name and the power of our good and gracious God. It, it was years ago when I was in seminary that I, I got acquainted with this author and pastor by the name of Jim Cimbala. Uh, he is the, the lead pastor of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church there in Brooklyn, New York. M many of us are familiar with Brooklyn Tabernacle because of the majestic music that they, that they have put out. Amen? I mean, the music is absolutely phenomenal. It is some of the best that you will ever hear. But here is the story of even Brooklyn Tabernacle, and that is uh, Pastor Jim's wife, which is the choir leader, was never, ever formally trained to do music. She never went to, 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 uh, to a music school. She, she never went and studied professionally, no. She said that the reason she was able to do what she was doing is because she first fell on her knees. And when she fell on her knees, she asked God to give her purpose and vision and give her direction. And, and from all of that there, we have now the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. But here's what happens on Tuesday night. It's on the screen, but here's what happens on Tuesday night. This is a real picture of what happens on Tuesday night in Brooklyn, New York. This is their not church service. This is their prayer meeting. And, and for years and years and years, they would line up. It would start around 6.30. They would line up around 5 o'clock around the block. Hundreds, if not even thousands of people would line up waiting to get inside. They're not waiting to get inside to hear the choir sing. Are y'all hear me tonight? They weren't waiting to get inside to hear Pastor Jim preach because Jim will only preach for 15, 20 minutes. They were lined up because they had believed, like Acts chapter 12, that if we come together on our Tuesday night prayer meeting, that the Holy Spirit is also going to show up as well. And when the Holy Spirit shows up, the Holy Spirit will answer the prayers that the people are praying. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Oh, God, free my tongue tonight. Are you hearing me tonight? The people there in Brooklyn believe that if they show up, that God would already be there and will begin to hear and answer their prayers. And can I come for y'all right now? Can I come for y'all? Because y'all, y'all, we got the truth. We got truth, but we are not desperate. For Jesus. Oh, what? Can you y'all hear what I just said? Can, can I say it again before I, before, I, before, I go, before I sit down and pray? I said, we got truth, but we're not desperate for a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. We're comfortable with Sabbath and say the dead and sanctuary and second coming. But how many of y'all know that's great and is well and doctrine is wonderful. But how many of y'all know that Jesus wants to live on the inside of your soul? He wants to give you power to live right, power to talk right, power to have power in this move, uh, this earth right now. So they show up on Tuesday, believe in God. And can I tell y'all, I believe that God is no respecter of persons. I believe that if it can happen in Brooklyn, New York, I believe it can happen in Huntsville, Alabama. Do I have a witness, somebody? Can I say it again? I believe it can happen in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm seeing right now hundreds and not even thousands of people coming around on Wednesday night to the most powerful service of our church. Why? Because folk are going to start praying for one another, and God's going to move like never before. Why? Because God's been saying, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Y'all heard the latter rain, early rain? God I've been waiting to pour out my spirit, but he said, where are my people that are saying, here I am, Lord, send me, use me. 
So we have not because we ask not. But I say, I, oh, no, 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 God, every blessing that you have in store for me and your people, I want them to receive it and benefit from it. Do I have a witness, somebody? I got to go. Y'all didn't say amen, all right. Okay, so we go. I'm just kidding. Uh, here's why you need a church. Uh, uh, give, me, give me 10. I'm out your way. Here, here's why you need a church tonight. Here, here it is. It's on the screen. Here, here's why you need a church tonight. Don't, don't miss this because there is a whole lot of bad talk about the church. I don't need the church. Church full of hypocrites. Church ain't nothing about nothing. The preacher ain't right. The members ain't right. You right. <laughs> you right. Matter of fact, if you ever find a perfect church, don't join. Because the moment you join, you got to mess up everything that you thought was perfect. And let me tell you right now, there is no such thing as a perfect church. Can I say it again? There is no such thing as a perfect church. But there is a such thing as a perfect Savior, and his name is Jesus. There is only one who is perfect, only one who is good, and that is Jesus Christ himself. But you need a church. Why? Because uh, Christ is the head, and we need to be connected to his body. Come on, say amen again. Amen. amen. You need a church. Why? Because God is the head. And check it out. If you read these texts, Colossians 1, 18 and, and 1 Corinthians, y'all, Jesus is the head, but y'all, you ain't never seen a head not attached to a body. Amen. And if you do, something real wrong. Right? It's dead. If the head is not connected to the body, then you're you watching the wrong stuff. Amen. <laughs> right? And you ain't never seen a hand except for what Daniel, meaning men taking your farce. You ain't never see a hand that's by yourself or a foot that's by itself. No, you need to be connected to the body. I, I got so excited about that right there. And y'all like, huh, can I say it again tonight? You need to be connected to the body. And can I tell you, all those who watch online, I love you and I praise God for you, but you better make sure you are connected to the body of Christ. I don't want to go to church because those church are No, no, no. No, I'll find you somewhere that's teaching the Word of God. Come on, somebody. That's standing on the Word of God. That's living out the principles of God's Word. That's doing all that the Bible teaches. And then we need a church, number two, because we need to encourage and uplift one another. Yep, I'm almost done. Amen. Amen. You need a church because you need some place to go outside of the bar. Amen. I, 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 my, my mind went to, my mind went to uh, Cheers back in the day. Y'all remember Cheers back in the day? Y'all ain't saved. Y'all remember Cheers back in the day? <laughs> Y'all remember Cheers? Cheers with Norm. Amen. Norm. He was the postal man. All right, how do I know that as a child? Amen. He, he ain't never delivered a piece of mail that day of his life. You ain't never. But Cliff and all the rest of them, they all walked in. Or Cliff was a mailman, I think. Or anyway, but anyway they, all, they all came in. They said, Norm. And it was a place where everybody knew each other's name. Da -da -da -dun -dun. <laughs> they never worked. Sam, Rebecca, they, just, they was just there hanging out in the bar. But that was their church. I'm trying my best because when they was going through mess, they would talk to one another about it. When they couldn't figure out how to get encouraged, they would talk to one another about being encouraged. When they needed help, they would talk to each other. And can I tell y'all, that's on one side. That's what the church is also called to do. Let me tell you something. You need a covering. Amen. Can I say it again? You, you, you need a spiritual covering. And the church provides that spiritual covering that you need. Amen. And the last thing is you need a church because you need to be equipped to love and to serve others. Amen. Amen. To love and serve others. So, so when my sister comes and my brother comes and they say, listen, I need somebody to pray for me. You ought to be the first one. Come on, somebody. You ought to be one of the first ones. I, I was so blessed today. I was uh, going past Walmart, and I was coming past Walmart, and I saw a car that was broken down. And as I was slowly passing by, trying to skip those number of people outside, what's going on, 
I slowly passed by, says the Dudley, and what I saw blessed my life. The people were outside. They could, their car was just broke down. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't stop people all ago. But I saw a whole gang of Oakwood University students. It wasn't their car. They were there to assist. Y'all can't say amen tonight. I slowed that thing down. I said, mm, mm, come on now. That's what I'm talking about. Because when you serve God and know God, you know that it's not just about me, myself, and I. But when God lives on the inside of you, something tells you I've got to serve somebody else. So, so I, I ended like this, and, and, and here it is tonight. So the church began to pray. And while they were have, are y'all ready for this, y'all, tonight? Can I, can I just get one amen right there? The church begins to pray, and then w- look what happens now in, in verse number 6 now. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that's Peter, uh, that night, Peter was, uh, I'm going so fast, y'all, Peter was sleeping. I, I got to go, y'all, but I, I, I don't want to overlook this point right here. Be- because somebody needs to get this tonight. You gotta, I, I promise you I'm trying to get out of here, but uh, Peter is on death row. <laughs> I, t- I love the Word of God. Peter is on death row. He knows in the morning they're about to try to take his life. Word has already gotten out. James is already killed. And while yet Peter is waiting to be executed the next morning, the Bible says Peter is sleeping with his chains on between the guards. I've got news for you that when you know Jesus, you can sleep in the midst of your persecution. You can sleep in, do I I have a witness tonight, somebody? When you know Jesus, won't he give you perfect peace? When you know Jesus, you know the Prince of Peace. Do I have a witness, somebody? Ah, Peter is sleeping because he knows who who he believes in. And I wish the text said he was snoring. Come on, somebody, y'all ain't gonna help me preach tonight. I, I wish that the text said he had drool coming out of his mouth. But I believe it's implied in the text, y'all, Peter is sleeping even though he's going to be on death row. I said this before, I'm going to say it to the day I die. If Jesus is going to be up all night long, why does it take both of us to be up all night long? One of us ought to go to sleep and it's not Jesus. Come on, somebody. If you trust in God, take yourself to sleep. Pull the covers over your head. Tuck yourself in like a baby. Say your prayers and say, God, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Why worry and pray? Are y'all hearing me tonight? I said, why worry and pray? No, if you trust God, trust God. Peter is sleeping in the midst of his execution on the morning. But he's sleeping between two guards now, and and the Bible says that they bound him with two chains. How many chains? Two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So he is chained up. They got guards that are there that are making sure that Peter don't go nowhere. Now behold... I'm so glad I have church before I come to church because I would be so discouraged if y'all, while while Peter is sleeping, the church is doing what? I I want y'all to get this tonight. I I got to go, but I want y'all to get this tonight. Here's what's happening in the text. There's a group over here that's calling upon the name of God. This group over here doesn't know exactly all the details what's happening over here. But all they know is over there is, I better keep on praying because when I pray, when you have a little talk with Jesus, he makes it everything all right. Well, as they begin to pray, the Bible says that, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison. I told y'all he was sleeping so good that the angel, the Bible says, he struck Peter. Did, you, did that go over y'all head or y'all, y'all got it? Amen? amen? So it, it wasn't like Peter, just Peter, wake up, man. Bro, we, we got to go. Because some of y'all, even right now, amen, even right now, I, I could use a little just, 
little nudge. Y'all worked all day. I did too. Amen. But I get excited about God's word. Hey, Bible says Peter is there, and the Bible says the angel struck him. Struck him. Re read that Greek word right there. He wasn't just touching me. It was, hey, boy, get up. And when he struck him, he smote him on his side, and he raised him up, saying, arise up how fast? Quickly. And when he got up, what happened to somebody? Y'all missing y'all amen tonight. You would do well if you would say amen every now and then to the work of God. Hey, wait a minute, y'all. While the church is praying, an angel showed up. And when the angel showed up, the chains began to fall off. I believe somebody that when the church prays, chains fall off. I believe, y'all, when the church begins to pray, that who the Son sets free is free indeed. The church began to pray, and the angel showed up because prayer dispenses angels. Boy, y'all make me work so hard for this. I want y'all to get this tonight. Prayer dispenses angels. I I've been preaching so long, it's so hard, and some of y'all forget what I say. So Daniel chapter 10 when, when Daniel could not figure out for 21 days all of this fasting and praying, that Daniel was already praying, and the Bible says on day one, God heard the prayer. But because Daniel kept on praying, God says, now let me send an angel to step in right on time. Are y'all hearing me tonight? When Daniel was in the lion's den, God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth. Why? Because prayer can go places that you and I can't go. So why pray? Because prayer goes places and does things can't can nobody else do. So Peter is in prison. An angel shows up. The chains fall off. He gets up, rises up, and now look at verse number 8 right now. We got a few more verses. Verse 8, the Bible says this right here. Verse 8, the Bible says, And the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind up thy sandals. And he did so, and he came unto him. Here's their amen. They, he, he cast off his garment about him, and the angel said, follow me. Yeah, because whenever you're obedient, that's when you find even more blessings. Angel said, follow me, verse 9 tonight. Verse 9, and he went out and followed him. And, and he was not that it was true that was done by the angel, but he thought, Peter thought he saw a vision. So, so Peter's like, man, this thing is so miraculous. This is so quick. See, when, I, I want to teach y'all Bible, Bible study. Let me come back to Bible study real quick. Bible study, uh, stop reading the Bible so fast. Because y'all read it to get done with it. You read it to check off, I read today. Check Sabbath school lesson. Check I read today. Check I had devotion. Slow down. Because if you slow down, you'll see the beauty of God's Word. Bible says that he, he, when he went out, they followed him, and he thought that it was a dream. Why? Because sometimes God moves so quickly in your situation, you got to pitch yourself to figure out, is this thing really true? I need one witness right there that can testify. So you have to look back over your life sometime and say, I can't believe how God had brought me out of that thing back then and look where I am right now. Do I have a witness tonight that can testify? Good God, he brought me out so well. I look back and say, man, was I really dreaming? Because sometimes God may move slow, but sometimes God moves in a hurry. And God is never late. He's always right on time. So when you think that God is delayed, it's your delay, but it's God's on time. It may say delayed on your, on your flight calendar. But on God's heavenly calendar, it says right on time. He thought it was a dream. Verse 10, I got a few more. Verse 10, Bible says, verse 10, and they went past the first. And the second ward. Can y'all see in your mind? I, I told y'all I watch, I, I ain't watch a whole lot of TV like that, but I watch on TV. And in my mind right now, they booking through that thing. Come on, somebody. They, they, they going, they just, they just, they going through that, they going through that thing. And they came to an iron gate.
I'm done. They came to an iron gate that leads unto the city. In other words, they came to the gate that will give them freedom. So when they came to the gate, the Bible says, which opened to them on its own accord. Now, if you ain't said amen all night, you don't have an amen in your system. Can you bring your mind back to church tonight real quick because I shut it down tonight? That, that when they came to the gate, the gate opened on its own accord. Nope, nope, nope. I'll tell you what, why the gate opened. The gate opened because there was a group over there praying. And they don't even know what to pray for, but they all said, God, just have your way. Have your way. God. Anybody ever prayed that prayer? God, just have your way. I don't know what to pray for. I don't know what you're going to do. But God, if you can do anything, God, just have your way. And that prayer, God, have your way, opened up a door that no man can shut, and it shut all the doors that no man can open. It opened on its court. They went out. They passed through the gate, and forthwith the angel said, I'm good, I'm done. I've done my job. I led you to freedom. Now, what you going to do? Did y'all hear? The angel led him to freedom. But now Peter has a choice into the decisions to make. The church prayed he was free. So Peter could have, and you know he would not have, but he could have said, like many of us, whoo, that's good, and went about his business. Because how many times has God opened the door for you and you gave God a quick thank you and went about your business? Are you guilty? I know I am. Amen. I know I am. I've been guilty of that. I've been praying for something, and then God did the very thing I was praying for, and I gave God a, ooh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and kept on moving. No, I, I, I would suggest that when God moves in a mighty way, especially for that very thing that you've been praying for, I would suggest that you don't move too quickly from thanking God for what he has done. I believe sometimes you ought to pull it over park and get out and say, God, I bless your name for every single time I doubted, for when I didn't think that you was going to move, when I didn't know how you was going to move. How about you just give God praise for what he's done? The angel departed, and when the angel departed, verse 11 says this, verse 11 says that when Peter, then Peter was come to himself, he had come to himself now, and he says, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jews. And then verse 12 says this, Peter says, he comes to this, when he considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary. Here's the good part. Here's the part you know quite well. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. Don't miss this part, y'all. I'm done. Who, who many were gathered together doing what everybody. Many, many were gathered together praying. Many were gathered together praying. Many were gathered together praying. Prayer is not boring. Prayer is not boring. Don't, don't, don't go past your day and don't spend time with God in prayer. And, and let me tell you something. I know if, if some of you, I'm so busy, I don't have time to pray. Let me tell you something. If you're too busy, if you don't have time to pray, you're too busy. And let me tell you something. God's not looking for your microwave prayer. He appreciates you talking to him, but he don't want a microwave. No, he wants you to have a conversation with him. Not, not that he don't know what you need, but God's like, come on, would you talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Can I give you one more thing before I shut it down tonight? So when you wake up in the morning and you pray to God, how many, how many times have you prayed in your bed while you were laying in your bed? Do I have a witness in the house? Come on, come on, let me see your hands. You prayed while you was laying in that bed. Amen, amen. I know I, know I have as well. Amen. I woke up this morning, I was praying for a brother this morning. I woke up, when he was my first day in my mind. I was praying for him in my bed. And then y'all know the bed's so good, amen. How many of y'all God will wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Four or five. And uh, you start praying, and next thing you know, you was praying, and all of a sudden, you, you asleep. Here's to God. God. God's like, oh, they're up. 
is five cars out. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, they're dozing off. It's okay, they're my child. And then when you wake back up again, where was I? God said, it's okay. I'm always here waiting to hear your voice. You don't got to beat yourself up. He wants to hear from you. He loves your voice. He loves to hear you talk to him. I told you 10, I'm over already. As Peter, they went to the house. They were praying. Peter starts knocking on the door. Isn't this good, y'all? He knocks on the door. A damsel comes out, which is really your shut up. I had time. Here's your shout. Here's your amen. And here it is that Rhoda shows up at the door. Rhoda is a young girl. I get so excited about this because Rhoda, some scholars even suggest, is a teenager. You miss your amen. Rhoda is in prayer meeting with all the rest of the adults and them. Because if Rhoda don't learn how to pray in the sanctuary, how's she going to learn how to pray when she gets older? Come on, somebody. And she ain't seen mama and them cry, crying out to God. Rhoda is there. And Rhoda answers the door, verse 14 and onwards, I'm done. Verse 14 and onwards, and when she knew Peter's voice, hallelujah, she, she, she opened not the gate for gladness. Because that's what happens when God answers your prayer. You get excited about that thing. And she ran in and she told how Peter stood at the gate. He's here. He's here. Come on, y'all. And the church that was praying, verse 15, and they said unto her, thou art mad. Don't you love the Bible? You're mad. Y'all crazy. She said, yeah, the church said, y'all crazy. You crazy, girl. But she constantly affirmed that even so, then she said, they said, well, it must be his angel. If you didn't know, if you missed what was happening right now, Peter showed, the answer to prayer showed up at the door. The answer to prayer showed up at the door and the people who were praying said, it can't be so. Which tells me this, that it really wasn't the power of your prayer to begin with. Because where you're insufficient, God makes you sufficient. So it wasn't really about you because they were praying and really not believing. But God says, at least you're praying, so I got something to work with. Verse 16 and 17, last two verses, and this is what happens right here. But Peter, continue knocking. Because sometimes you got to say, what you've been praying for really can be answered. And when they opened the door, they saw him and were astonished. And the last verse says, verse 17 says this, verse 17, is, but, they, but he beckoning unto them with the hand, he said, no, no, hold y'all peace. He said, no, 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 shh, be quiet, shh, hold, hold your peace. He declared unto them how the Lord, how, how who everybody? Peter is smart enough to know you better give credit to who credit is due. The Lord brought him out of prison, and he said, now go show these things unto James and to the brethren. He departed, and he went into another place. Peter survived because the church prayed. My question for you tonight, put the question on the screen right now. My question for you tonight is this. Is, is anything too hard for God? So what is it that you need God to, to do tonight, these next few moments right now? What is it you need God to do? 
Like, I'm asking you, like, what is it in your heart right now do you need God to do? I want everybody, if you would stand up where you are right now, just stand up where you are. What is it that you need God to do? I've sat where you've sat so many times. And this next moment right here is so awkward. And it's like, no, Pastor, please don't do it. I'm ready to go home. But would you take one minute right now and turn to somebody next to you? Why don't you get into a group of two or three? You don't got to just ask what their name is. It's, it's okay. Ask them what your name is. Y'all been coming to church for 40 years and don't know either, each other's name. Ask them what's your name. We said, what, what is your name? What is your name? <laughs> How can I pray for you tonight? How can I pray for you tonight? And I want you right now. Two, three, wherever you are, don't, don't, nobody by themselves. For those who are online tonight, I'm inviting you right now to put your prayer requests in the chat box. There are individuals in the chat box right now who are ready to pray for you right now. I want you right now, put those in the, in the chat box right now. We're going to end our time together in prayer in these next few moments right now. Grab somebody, why don't you grab somebody, grab somebody. And I want you to ask them, what do you need God to do for you? And I want you to pray right now where you are. Pray right now where you are. For those of you who are online, you're still praying in the sanctuary. For those who are online, I'm looking right now at your prayer requests online. And I'm going to pray for you because somebody's like, well, Pastor, you ain't praying for nobody. I'm about to pray for you. If you put your response in the chat box, I'm going to start praying for you as well. We're believing God tonight. We're believing God tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah, I see them coming in tonight. I see them coming in tonight. I see them coming in tonight. We have not because we ask not. Amen. You all can. I want to pray. I want to call these names. If you all could just keep continue to pray, continue to pray. I'm praying tonight for Suzette Bull. I'm praying that her husband will find a job in Jesus' name. That her husband will find a job. I'm praying tonight for Karen Gardner, for her son. And God, you know exactly what she stands in need of. I'm praying for Lamb Daly, praying for the right job. I'm praying for P. Gall tonight, praying that God will heal me and increase my finances in the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm praying for Kyle Baker tonight, that God will give him wisdom. I'm praying for Suzette Fisher-Bull tonight, again, healing for my 
uh, big son, Sanjay. I'm praying for him right now in Jesus' name. I need, Betty says, I need reten uh, memory. Amen. Retents of memory. There we go. Holy Spirit and healing and supply my needs. Jennifer Green and I is praying for her husband to be saved. Hallelujah. And her son. Jeanette is praying and Green, amen. Eve says, I'm praying tonight for a closer walk with Jesus. Pat is saying, I'm praying for the Crusoe family. Valerie is praying for salvation and health and safety of her son. Unspoken requests. Eve is praying, please pray for, for God to help me and, and pray more and for a job promotion in Jesus' name. Mary says, I'm praying and I need a new home. God is able to provide that new home tonight. Kai Gary is praying for the power of the Holy Spirit to move daily for divine energy, praying for KWLA, an expansion from debt free. Doris Shirley tonight is praying that God will give her instructions on how to give Bible studies. Miss Sam is praying for health tonight in Jesus' name. Individuals are praying, a steward is praying for employment for family to be saved. Patricia tonight is praying for a son, and we need healing in our minds and our hearts. Jennifer Green again is praying for her mother to accept the Sabbath. Amen. And Valencia is praying for family to keep the faith. Margarita is praying for Simon, is praying for her daughter and her son. Janice is praying for sis. Linda is praying for finances and health. Miss, Miss Sam is praying for a husband and children. God, I'm, I'm calling these names tonight, God, because we know you're able. Debbie, God, tonight is praying for that God will move in the lives of her children for the open door opportunity to provide for her needs. B.L. Pierre is praying that God for her family, and she's under attack right now in New Orleans, and I pray that the hands of Satan will be loose right now. Margaret Simon tonight is praying for insomnia, that she may be able to find sleep and rest. Pray for Miss Sam tonight for resolve her tax issues in Jesus' name. Mario Ste Step tonight is praying for the Holy Spirit to move fresh in a powerful way. Wow, they, they, just, they continue to come in. They're individuals. I didn't call yours. Don't feel slighted because I didn't call yours. We want to pray together right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, tonight I, I lift before you this tablet and, and all those who are online, God. Lord, we know that you are a God that is able to do all things but fail. So, God, collectively, in the name of Jesus, God, the name that was able to bring Peter from that prison cell, God, the name of Jesus, where you declare that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. God, tonight we know that there is nothing too hard for you. So, God, tonight we give you our burdens. We give you our concerns. God, we give you everything, God, that burdens us. We turn it over to you. Because God, your word declares, cast all our cares upon you because, God, you care for us. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would meet us at our points of need. I pray, oh God, that you'll bring healing to individuals' bodies. I pray, God, that you'll bring deliverance, God. Break some chains right now. Break chains of addiction. Break chains of anxiety. Break chains of depression. God, we heard a testimony tonight of, a, of chains that were broken for suicide, God. God, we thank you for being a God that heals and answers prayer. So, God, tonight we turn everything into your hands, oh God, tonight. God, we put all of our concerns, all of our burdens, and our joys in your hand. And I pray, oh God, tonight that you will fail, God, not to hear us. I pray that you'll fail not to grant every single thing, God, that we stand in need of. And Lord, tonight, the power of a praying church taught us as well that you can move speedily. God, tonight, we, we don't know always your will, God, but, but Lord, move as you see fit. Move, God, at just the right time. And Father, even if you, if, if you are in our own minds delayed, help us, God, to hold on. Help us, not, God, not to throw in the tile. 
God, help us not to lose faith, God, but Lord, help us to trust and obey. For there's no other way but to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So God, please tonight, hear our humble cry. Please, God, move upon every situation, God, we've called on tonight. And Lord, in the days ahead, God, we believe that you're teaching us right here in Huntsville. God, right here at First Church, God, we believe, God, that you are calling us to be a house of prayer. God, may we have expectation mixed with faith and confidence in Jesus that whenever we ask in your name, according to your will, that you'll do it at just the right time. We thank you, God, for visiting us tonight. We thank you, God, for being in the sanctuary, in the virtual space, oh God, tonight. And when we leave this place, may we leave, God, with full assurance that you have heard our prayers on day one. <laughs> and that's going to all work together for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen, amen. Well, listen, God bless you tonight. Thank you all for joining us. God bless you. You are dismissed tonight. God bless you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on, on the weeks, on the Wednesdays, and of course the Sabbaths to come. Amen. Anybody feel better tonight? Anybody feel better tonight? I know you tarry tonight in Jesus' name. But may you go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you. God bless you, man. Absolutely.